Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another packed episode of CSK News. It's going to be a very short episode, but a lot of great stories out there. They will be time marked down below. Let's hop into our first one, though, revolving all around VACNAT. Now, very firstly, thanks to Swift, a CSK YouTuber. I'll link him down below. Has some great content out there and also revolves a bit around cheating, but he did provide us all the information for today's video or this first main story all about VACNAT, which apparently has gone under some big changes in these past few days, resulting in a lot of cheat providers and cheat users being shut down. So, obviously, great news out there. You guys know Valve's army of 11,000 CPUs. Are reportedly going to be 22,000 sometime soon in the future. They are making that CPU farm just to combat the cheating that is going on in CSGO, which seemingly is the most cheated game of all time. According to you know all the other games out there, it seems that every cheater wants to cheat in CSGO, which is astonishing as to why. But Valve, of course, having to deal with that, and apparently they are fighting back. Vacnet doing its job these last few days with a lot of random accounts being banned, and of course, cheat providers being shut down out of nowhere. Now, exactly as to why that was provided by Swift as well as information, apparently as of right now, it does take far fewer reports than it used to uh, to get sent to Overwatch. If you guys do not know Overwatch, a great system to stop cheaters, but also once an account is actually sent to Overwatch, it's pretty much a toss up in the air. Once you are in an Overwatch ban uh, or Overwatch report, it's pretty much up to the person watching you whether they want to report you or want to not report you. And I would say based off my experience in doing Overwatch, you guys probably as well, I actually have a video I'll link down below where I did 100 Overwatches and a majority of the time where you were actually of course watching someone in Overwatch, they were indeed guilty. So once you send even uh, any kind of cheater to the Overwatch system, more likely than not, they are going to get banned. So of course, this is a great update. So apparently, very subtly, and no one really knew about this, now with VACnet, apparently it takes far fewer player reports to send an account to Overwatch, which of course, in turn, means a lot more accounts are getting banned out of nowhere, which is great news so far. And even bigger news, apparently these cheaters are now being attracted across their accounts. So if you were a cheater, uh, many of you are very well aware, you probably, if you're going to cheat on one account, you'll just, once that account gets banned, you create a secondary account. Uh, Apparently now this new VACnet system is actually tracking those accounts, uh, but actually marking those accounts as well in the future. So if you try and scrap your first account, your second account will be marked, as well as now the new VACnet system is using a trust factor. So of course, you guys know what trust factor is all about. It's now using trust factor as a way of sending accounts to the Overwatch system. So a lot of great updates coming sometime soon. We'll see how big these VAC waves are going to be in the future, but definitely a big hit here. And now let me share with you very lastly as well what some of the biggest cheat providers are saying to their Discord groups. A lot of Discord groups have been shut down as well. So VACnet and Valve doing their job very well this past week. We'll see what the response is from these cheat providers, but here's the initial response and what they said in some of their groups. About one day ago, approximately on 5 15, 18, we decided to take down the cheat due to an unusual amount of reported Overwatch bans. We were seeing bans that were showing up in CSGO as Overwatch and on profile as game ban. Although these messages are normal, if you were to receive an Overwatch ban, we had received a large amount of reports, so we took down the cheat to ensure the safety of all accounts while we did some internal ban testing. Now skip ahead to the very end as well guys we believe this change was an update to vac system called vacnet vacnet is to put in simple terms a network of computers that have learned what legit players look like in csgo vacnet's job is to review demos or watch games and if vacnet comes to the conclusion that a player is cheating it will instantly put a user into overwatch for human review to our knowledge the overwatch system did not change and based on what valve has said once you're in overwatch regardless if you if what you were put in there by the reports or by vacnet itself normal players that have access to overwatch system like usual can choose to convict you or not convict you. So obviously, like I said before, guys, now when you when you look into Overwatch, when you do Overwatch cases yourself, majority of those accounts are you're going to be choosing them as guilty, and that is a good thing for us because seemingly by these words, it, it does seem Vacnet now sends you to Overwatch easier than it was before. I think before the the guesstimation was actually around anywhere from one to eleven reports on your account is what it took to get you to Overwatch. Now the estimation, thanks to Swift and other cheaters out there, the estimation is less than five. You report an account less than five times, you. Can Apparently can go to Overwatch, and of course that means a very, very much higher chance of cheaters being banned. Now that of course could lead to people who are not cheating being banned easier as well but the, the, you have to weigh the odds in this situation. But nonetheless, it seems like a pretty good update so far and a subtle update that Valve has not, uh, uh, you know, seemingly not announced to us anyway. So thank you to Swift as well. I'm sure I mispronounced or miss said some of that stuff, so feel free to comment down below. When it comes to cheating, I'm not very good at discussing the news around cheating because I've never cheated before. I don't really know the clients or, you know, the details of that. But anyway, speaking of cheaters out there, my man, my friend, and of course the legend himself who calls out other people and pro players for cheating, apparently Dan M himself has received a 
backman on his profile a couple days ago. Now, first off, I did reach out to him. He uh, does not really have any other comments to say besides LOL. I don't think he really believes it, and I really sincerely do not think the guy was cheating. According to him, though, on his profile, he did actually post a comment on his profile amidst all the other comments. People are taking this opportunity to trash the guy like no other. If you guys are aware of Dan M's content, he has made countless videos on any pro you can name of, a, of some sketchy clips they've had. So this is very, very an ironic situation. I do believe he's not cheating, but he did actually take to his Steam profile to tell us exactly what happened. Now, apparently he logged in for a span of about half an hour, and if you guys check his profile, he does not any longer play CSGO, which is very unfortunate, but when he did go log in to actually sell his skins, apparently he was actually handed a VAC ban. So yes, the legend himself, Dan M, the man who calls out other cheaters, reportedly, allegedly, maybe was cheating. I don't believe it, but... I, I don't know. And after a very healthy month and a half break, besides the instances that happened back in late March, I'm sure you all are very well know, know what I'm talking about. We're resolving Sadokist. He has now returned to commentating, or he will, during the ECS finals. So unfortunately enough, this does mean we're going to have the, I think it's actually just Harry is his name. Other commentators are, as well are going to be coming back, Sadokist being one of them. That does mean the newer talent we've had during ECS will take their step back as the main commentator, that being Sadokist, now takes charge again. Now I would say it was a healthy break, as many of you know, a lot longer than I initially expected after the instance that did occur. I hope him the best and I wish him the best of luck when he does come back to ECS. We're going to see though how the chat reacts and I'm sure the Reddit army, the, the Twitch army, the stream armies are ready to berate him with comments. It's going to be an interesting day and night to see his first day back and we'll see just how much hate is still there. Hopefully nothing, but yes, Sato Kiss is now finally back. Now very lastly, in today's episode of CSGO News, talking about pro players out there who maybe just have way too many sponsors to deal with. It's a problem that I wish I had. Uh, apparently Cold Zero and were actually uh, watching during ESL Pro League Finals some advertisements. They saw themselves pop up and realized or thought they, they were not actually told about this sponsorship. Now, uh, just a few minutes or actually I think it was two hours later, they were clarified to by one of their managers or one of their management team members that apparently, yes, they were signed up to do that sponsorship. So just before Fallen took to the lawyers and, and it was going to sue the heck out of ESL, they found out they had a sponsor that they had no idea about, which again is a problem I wish I really had because it must be nice. But Anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode. Very short episode of CSGO News. If you guys did enjoy it, please leave a comment or a like down below. I, I actually have a lot of time today. I'm going on a road trip. If you guys did not know, huge shouts for all of you guys who are, who are still here and remember why I shaved my head. I actually shaved my head for LLS, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. I'm going to, um, I guess you could say the get together, uh, the whole charity itself, the organization is having a little get together for all the donors for that cause. And if you guys do remember, we raised just over $6,500 for it. So that's the event I'll be at tonight. If you guys want to follow that, follow me on Twitter. I will definitely take some pictures for all of you, and uh, it's going to be a fun time. So that's why this is so. If you guys are newer viewers, I used to have way longer hair. But anyway, I hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you all next time. Please leave a comment. I want to talk to you guys, and uh, I will see you all Monday with a weekend recap. And enjoy your weekends, everybody. My name is Jake Merlock. You, I will see you all next time. Bye.